have with us Dr. Anjula Pandey. She is a principal scientist in our bureau, very experienced taxonomist of our bureau. Her specialization is economic botany, plant taxonomy, and systematics. She's done her PhD from Delhi University in 1999. She is a faculty member of the PGR discipline, having 33 years of research experience, and is currently engaged in PGR activities related to identification, use, and value addition of economic plants and systematic studies on Indian taxa. She has acquired skills in plant identification of diverse groups of cultivated, lesser known semi-domesticates from the Indian origin. And, uh, and her specialized fields of work focus on diversity distribution and systematic studies on, of economic plants of India and wild relatives of crop plants of Indian region. She has visited various institutes, national and international, and her area at these various institutes, such as in the United States of America, Missouri Botanical Gardens, New York Botanical Gardens, Fort Collins, California, Davis, Arnold Arbitorium, etc. She's also engaged in teaching as, teaching, as I told you, at PG School IARI. And Dr. Pandey is involved in organizing and participating in several trainings, symposia, and meetings, which are organized in ICR NBPGR. She is also in the editorial board of the Journal on Plant Genetic Resources and has 250 publications to her credit. She has authored four books on PGR and uh, she has been an expert member in the panel of DST funded projects, IIT Delhi, as well as DSDS. She is an expert consultant and special invitee in the Apari Bangkok for underutilized crops and presently she is the curator of the National Herbarium of Cultivated Plants, which is housed here at NBPGR. So I request ma'am to please begin her talk. Uh, thank you, Dr. Ira, for introducing me to the audience. Uh, I, I will straight away start my topic, which I have already explained it to you, that for many of you, it may be known to you, but at the same time, some of you may not be knowing about the subject at all. So we can have a uh, last uh, few um, interactive sessions after my lecture is over and after the demonstration is done. So welcoming all of you to the Delhi and particularly in the National Herbarium of Cultivated Plants about which I am going to speak a few words introducing you about the importance of the National Herbarium of Cultivated Plants. Herbarium management its role in genetic resources is well established and we have tried to establish this role through my experience throughout the working experience and the period of study during my um, tenure in the NBPGR. Historical part of the journey started with uh, the probably the earliest herbaria which were known to be the physic gardens where people from the herbalist uh, we are using the medicines, medicinal plants they used to conserve and dried the plant herbarium specimens. So what are the herbarium specimens? Herbarium specimen is nothing but a dried plant material preserved in such a manner so that anybody can study the material for its identity, for utilization of different data attached to this one and besides uh, present day they are also using it for several purposes and more than 25 to 30 uses of the plant genetic resources we have tried to enlisted about the importance of these herbaria. As far as we know that we have approximately 3000 global herbaria which are actively associated in the plant India we have 3.5 million herbarium specimens located in different herbaria across the uh, within the country at the national level. Largest herbarium you already know I think uh, uh, five students of ours have already visited Q Botanic Garden this year and they know the importance of it and they are they were very fascinated to know about the value of such resources and understanding of the PGR per se. Index Herbariorum as the name suggests it is the technical list of herbaria global herbaria which are attached to and which are associated with this index and New York Botanical Garden is maintaining such list in which NBPGR, NHCP which is National Herbarium of Cultivated Plants is also enlisted along with them 
it's at the international level with the New York Botanical Garden and we are part of Index Herbariorum. Recent research also indicating a large number of publications are coming up recently utilizing herbarium for different kind of data extraction from that and it is becoming and gradually being recognized an important source of many other information. Uh, how do they help us? How do the herbarium help us in a different kind of study? We have large number of lists, a long list with that one, but we, a, few, a few of them I would like to list are data on the flowering plant fruiting period which our explorers are utilizing, similarly eco-geographic studies and the morphological variation in available in the herbarium specimen, strategic and novel scientific writing activities of the plant genetic resources and the crop wild relatives, also locating areas and the mapping collecting species with a narrow range of distribution and evidences of plant versus area of growth and the specific niches of collection. These are some of the important useful uh, traits which they are going to give us. Again, gap identification of germplasm. In this institute, we are going also this uh, herbarium is associated with the exploration activity in a big way. Our exploration people are going to different areas and collecting material of the identity. In the morning, you have heard about uh, the exploration activities through Dr. K. C. Bhatt. So whenever these people are going, before going, they are finding out which particular area they should visit, how does the plant look like and how do they can locate those plants. Of course, educational purpose is one of the major activities on which we will be focusing on when you, uh, you will be visiting uh, a little while from just now. These are how uh, different uh, flow chart showing that herbarium processing, addition of the material and the flow becomes like this, registration. At the time of registration, we can accept or reject the specimen. If it is accepted, the processing takes place, which follows identification and authentication and maintenance of the specimen. Uh, in a little uh, while from now, we will be demonstrate, uh, demonstrating how drying process is effective of the collected material. After that, specimen is included in the herbarium. During your visit to the herbarium facility, we will be showing that in what way the dried herbarium specimens are maintained and placed in the cupboards and are used by various researchers for practical uses right from identification up to the extraction of DNA. They can utilize that material, have a right um, identification and also the value and the ethnobotanical uses which have been written in the labels. Going further ahead, uh, this, these quotations are from some of the international publications saying that dry garden, uh, the gardens are becoming dry it indicates that it has become nowadays at the back seat of it simply because of coming of the recent sciences in forward. But at the same time, we realize that without understanding and without knowing the correct name of any plant, nothing can go further fo forward. Even if you are dealing with modern sciences or like DNA extraction, molecular biology or biochemistry or any other science, even the crossability program, cytology, etc., if you know about the correct identity of the plant, you can understand its value and you can attach the great value to that plant. So because of that fact, the correct identity, you need to understand and use the herbaria for that purpose. This is uh, to say that what is a quality specimen? When I am saying that herbarium is a collection of dried plant specimen and national herbarium of cultivated plant, as I am going to emphasize on this one, is that our herbarium of cultivated plants is very unique and different from any other herbaria globally or at the national level simply because we are not only including the cultivated plants variability but we are also conserving the cultivar collections of the crops, the obsolete varieties, crop wild relatives and weedy races of many forms. And besides that, weeds of agricultural importance. So all of you are the agricultural scientists, some of you are dealing with the agriculture also. So you need to understand the identification of weeds which are coming into your fields and you need to know the name and after knowing the name, you can understand its weedy potential and other things. So to understand this one, our national herbarium is important and the second one is our herbarium is having 
the arrangement system of arrangement unlike the other traditional herbaria where they are following certain bentham and hooker system of classification or angler and uh, parental system of classification we are following a very simplified alphabetical arrangement of putting up the material simply because the users who are coming to us for identification purpose and using purpose they are the people who are not purely taxonomists and secondly they are para botanists and agriculturalists and pgr workers to facilitate them we have tried to simplify the system by arranging the material in an al alphabetical manner this is how a quality specimen means. The quality specimen means it should be depicting of all important plants which help us in identification. What are those? Uh, first of all, when we are talking about the genetic resources, genetic resources um, umbrella may consist of the entire gamut of plant species because everything is important. But when I talk about the PGR of agricultural importance, I am more or less focusing on the higher plants per se when NBPGR activity is concerned. So angiosperm. So what are should be the parts represented in a herbarium? It should have a flowering part. It should also have a pod and seed material. Why seed is important? Because in other traditional herbaria, they may have any of these parts. But in our case, we are putting more emphasis on the seed collection simply because our activities are associated and linked to the conservation. And in conservation, as a germplasm, we are collecting seed or propagule. So we have to uh, expertise our uh, expertise on the basis of seed identification on which we are working in a grouped and phased manner. In some groups, we have already worked and made some small keys. In others, we are trying to work out. So this is the quality specimen means and also the fruit specimen and seed material, particularly the crop wild relatives where the plants look very similar. When you go to the field, you are totally confused. So in that case, you need to represent the flowers as well as pod and seed so that the identification is confirmed. Uh, this is only the glimpses how our small national herbarium of uh, plant cultivated plants traveled from a very uh, small room 5 to 5 m uh, old herb, uh, in the old campus. It moved to a wing where you are going to visit in the evening just now. The timeline to say that presently we started with 5,000 and now we have more than 25,000 specimen available and we have gone a little bit ahead and before uh, this one, 1976, uh, it was associated with the IRI herbarium. Now we are independent herbarium and HCP, National Herbarium of Cultivated Plants. Currently, this facility is used for teaching, research and other purposes. Besides that, we are also undertaking the documentation part of it. Uh, she is the first, Dr. Nair, Roshini Nair is the first curator of this herbarium who established this herbarium and presently we will see many of the uh, facilities were brought out during her time and she has just retired 3-4 years back. This is just a layout to say that this is the kind of arrangement we have in the herbarium. We have the capacity of about 50,000 herbarium specimen which can be accommodated in this one. We have different types of uh, storage uh, system with us. We will be showing it to you. Uh, I have already indicated that how National Herbarium of Cultivated Plants differs from the other herbaria in what sense. It is very clearly depicted and well said. This graph indicates that right in the beginning when it was established, we had very high number of specimens. And gradually now the focus is mainly towards the crop wild relative collections and also the variability within the crop plants, our main emphasis is because the space is a limitation and the uh, uh, labor is also important and maintaining the herbarium specimen within this facility under Delhi condition is a great difficulty. So we are trying to prioritize our inclusion and in, on that basis we are very specifically and choosy about collecting the material and putting them into the herbarium. A few variability specimens, you will be seeing them, witnessing them when you visit there. A net house facility for identification and grow out we have with us. Similarly, we have a big, uh, uh, we have a big herbarium uh, library uh, containing 200 books of taxonomy available in the main library and also the index card which are helpful in identification and documentation 
and virtual herbarium which is a recent facility we have we are on the process of developing part of uh, this one is already available on the web and dr archak will be showing you this facility so going further ahead this flow chart indicates that how selection and prioritization for the further research work is going to take place i'll skip this slide coming to uh, how we have to focus and prioritize the crop and their wild relatives are always a top priority for us alium is one of such top priority many of you may not be knowing that we are having a very good uh, crop uh, this thing of a crop gene pool of alium alium means onions and onions wild species are growing wildly in the our himalayan region and they are being utilized and collected and maintained in our bhawali station and on this one we worked a lot and a few glimpses of the same you can see it uh, as some of the live images which will fascinate you different types of alium which you may not have witnessed other than onion and garlic which are the common ones i have already said about this one we are also taking students to the field and i am told that you will be visiting the botanic garden or maybe somewhere around the gardens in yamuna biodiversity park you will be seeing certain identification labels indicating its value of that plant and you will be interacted by different people who are maintaining the botanical garden also significant collection i need not bother because i have already indicated that we are maintaining so much of the large collection and underutilized plants are always given a top priority what are the underutilized plant species underutilized crops which are in our tribal areas when we visit we have not even heard of those species being under cultivation and utilization by many of the tribal people and when you go to those areas they show us and they are very very potential species which can be which need to be introduced into the mainstream of our uh, food chain so because of which we are also maintaining and also helping other people to utilize them and to study and use them for the research for the research purposes virtual herbarium we will be demonstrating you as live uh, material how you can consult that virtual herbarium a different system of arrangement is maintained over there we will show you uh, when you visit there and these are some of the important uh, herbarium specimen how they are arranged and some of the important resources which have been added to our facility and the research material which we have added to our herbarium facility through large number of interactive studies through our explorations and our own grow out test etc again some of the material on which i have worked and my team has worked some of the traditional vegetables from the northeast if any of you are from the northeast i think you will be able to appreciate this a uh, soap flong which is uh, growing there in the tribal areas and they are using it for and from this uh, species we could uh, isolate uh, the nematicidal value and bio pesticide we have identified and the research work is still going on and its uh, uh, testing is also in the, under the process some more examples of such uh, similar crops and our active involvement development of protocols means uh, processing and the drying of herbarium specimens of cultivated plants is a challenge for us because drying of the normal traditionally uh, floristic species is rather simpler but in case of uh, the cultivated plants where you have very big size of fruit maybe for example lufa or maybe laginaria or pumpkins how do you process them how do you depict them as cultivated plants so this is one of the most important challenge for us and we are working towards putting up the different specimens or different uh, samples so that our collectors are able to uh, and so that our users are able to appreciate and consult our herbarium for these purposes uh, some significant important publications which uh, dr ira has already introduced that so many publications have come out as uh, one of my teams we have brought out wild edible plants of india with dr aroda wild relatives of crop plants also from um, in with my team genetic resources of rosesi and many other important plant species uh, dealing with this one the new initiatives like i have told you that the uh, range of uh, variability available in crop plants in many of the herbaria at global levels they are not giving much emphasis on the cultivated plants per se and variability is given the least importance 
so we are trying to maintain different kind of variability available within the cultivated times because these are the materials on which our breeders are interested because that is the type of material though in the gene bank you will be having the seed material but before you select and choose the material you need to see how does it look like so using those herbarium uh, depictions you can very well identify it and prioritize those uh, those materials digitization i have already indicated many of the research programs and many of the teaching programs and enhancing the hrd like this program and many other recently we have concluded indo iraq training program for iraqi officials who have funded us fully and we were able to conduct a very nice program for them so with this one i'll just close my talk now dr ms rita gupta who is uh, deeply associated in this herbarium facility she will demonstrate you a little bit because many of you may or may not be doing so to facilitate some of them i'll be just uh, briefly telling you when you go in the field and you find out you want to create a herbarium specimen and prepare your own herbarium specimen you can have any polythene bag where the moisture will be retained within the plant till you start processing the same so we collect the material from the field with the help of knife and uh, maybe uh, with the help of knife or scissors you can pluck it like this is a shrub which we have already uh, which we have already collected from the plant she has put a tag inside this one so as to indicate from which location and she will be putting some code with this one and the date of collection and tentatively if you are able to identify the name it's all right if you don't know the name you can put its hindi name local name whichever name you know if you don't know the name you can put a b c d and you let the other people to help you in identification that is what that is what we want you to uh, learn the process of identification no one can become expert taxonomist in a day but if you are interested in knowing the plants and knowing the value of the genetic resources you will have to learn this exercise so this is the data sheet herbarium record sheet in which there are different parameters we'll be distributing one sheet uh, one sheet each of this book to you later on and uh, this consists of botanical name locality date of collection and the herbarium uh, number etc for generally for each specimen you are supposed to collect 3 to 5 herbarium specimen what is a specimen it has to have at least about the size of 12 to 14 inches maybe the size can be smaller but a minimum size to be accommodated within a standard size of uh, size of the mounting sheet okay so now she will be showing you the hard board the corrugated sheet which is nothing but a small cardboard sheet of a appropriate size these are the blotters and in putting inside the dried plant material for the drying process when you are first putting it inside the um, drying sheet she will be spreading all the parts as far as possible not to avoid the overlapping she will be removing some of the leaves but the leaves should be removed in such a manner that the basal part is left because you should know what was the leaf arrangement okay and if it is a branch and if it is a very heavily branched or a bushy type of material you should cut and trim the branches emanating from that main branch now she is trying to <coughs> put everything in order and now uh, you have to see that if it is a plant is very much succulent you will be putting large number of blotters in between because when it is pressed between the blotters because of the transpiration the water will come out and this is called a sweating period sweating period can be 6 to 12 hours in certain cases it could be 24 hours when the plant maximum evaporates water because of the injury when we are pressing it the water evaporation takes place and this leads to bad quality of herbarium specimen so what we are going to do in such cases we have to repeatedly change the sheets it can be within a day or less than that if the period is full of humidity like in the monsoon season if it is a dry season you need uh, you can do it in a day or so in the beginning at least for 7 days you have to change the sheet every day what happens when you find a plant when you are moving and you don't have these kind of equipments with them with you then in such cases you are recommended that you can purchase a bundle of newspapers from any shop 
you can have such kind of blotters, uh, these uh, cardboard sheets and you can purchase and collect the material. You need not leave any interesting material. This is my guidance to you because this is the way you will grow further towards collecting plant material and genetic resources. It is one of the adorable step which I would like to say that you should inculcate in yourself. And she has also trying to say that this particular specimen was pressed I think two days back and but in case of now how do you know that the drying is effective after six to seven days or maybe 15 days repeated changing of the sheet may result in completion of drying process. How do you know that uh, the process the plant has completely been processed for inclusion in the and pasting in the mounting. She will show you a dried plant herbarium specimen which is complete, completely dried and ready for mounting. She will show you. She will show that when a plant is completely ready for mounting means it does not limp. Okay. But there are certain plants which will even if they are completely dry they will limp also. Something like cucurbits, they will limp because they are the climbers. So, what are those tests? In case of climbers you have to just break a little part of the plant material. If it is a little bit uh, you know um, you can break it with a crispy thing. You can work it out that now it is completely dried for mounting. Now she will show you yeah, different types of material you will have to take care of. Uh, different types of material all are processed and ready for mounting. So, now she will demonstrate that uh, she will demonstrate that uh, these are some of the mounting boards on which a processed herbarium specimen has to be mounted. It is particularly of a specific size the size shown to you in, uh, uh, in the evening when you go in the herbarium we will be showing you and giving you all the literature relating to this one. So, this is the particular uh, this mounting board is an absorbent type of unprocessed mounting board. It should not be a treated one. Okay. It should not be treated one because for a fungal infection you need to have a specific type of material which has a long lasting and you have a specific type of handmade papers which are untreated material. Now, she will show you a completely mounted specimen. So, to make it adhesive on the mounting sheet either we have to put needle and thread which was a traditionally old method still we are following and in addition some synthetic adhesives we are using. So, the thicker parts are still being used because in the cultivated plant herbarium using the adhesives is, is not possible to stick make it stick on the uh, board only for the leaves and other smaller flower parts we are using the ad uh, synthetic uh, uh, gums. But for uh, making them stitch on the herbarium sheet, we are still using, you can show it from the back side. Each stitch has to be independently stitched and it should not be connected with the other stitches. Each should be separately done. This is the ideal way. Now, she will show you <coughs> the label, first of all label information. Each specimen has to be registered, I have shown you in the flow chart. And registration number each herbarium specimen has a unique NH number we are giving, but other herbaria may give their own number. NH number suppose for example, if you give me any you deposit you feel like depositing any herbarium specimen with our herbarium, I will give you an NH number and you can any time come to us referring with that number that your herbarium specimen is lying with us. That number is within that stamp you can see it on the top left hand side herbarium specimen label on the left hand side. Okay. So, in this one the all information which was there in the booklet this information has to be given. Date of collection, the person who has collected besides if you do not know the name you can leave it and when it is get it gets identified you can put the name later on. Most important part of this one is the notes. Notes means at the time and the place of collection when you visited a site and you collected a herbarium specimen, was there any recorded use of that particular species or a type? I am talking about the crop wild relatives. And if it is not known, if they say that this is a uh, wild type which is being used for eating purpose also, there are large number of examples, that note should come. You should not take notes from the any, any of the published sources because 
from the published sources, it is a general documentation which has been validated by some other person for some other area. So, the area of collection and the notes should coincide with each other, it should not be recorded from any other source. Last of all, the collector who is deposited, <coughs> depositing the material to me, he should sign and put his name in a complete way. On the left hand, on the left hand side bottom, you can also attach a kind of paper packet. She will show you a small paper packet. While processing herbarium specimen, you have certain flower which will drop out or certain pods which are dried, but from the herbarium specimen, nobody should pluck any part because it is a precious wealth and you should not pluck it from that part. So, for the study purpose, we are maintaining and putting the dried seeds, dried pots and the floral parts inside these pouches. Depending upon the size of that material, the pouch may be fixed on the left hand side on the bottom corner and it can be accommodated within this one. These are some of the standard practices, but if sometimes the herbarium specimen shape is something like that the label is not able to be accommodated, you can shift a little bit here and there. This is one way I am trying to show you. Recently, we have undertaken a small protocol development. Earlier, we were keeping the specimen totally open and applying mercury chloride and also applying naphthalene powder just to save them because it is ultimately a dried material which is theoretically dead. So, by applying mercury chloride repeatedly, it was creating health hazards otherwise also. So, we have stopped using mercury chloride only in specific cases we are using. Okay. Then in second case, we are regularly uh, dusting it with the naphthalene powder to avoid the storage insects which are developing uh, in the herbarium at the time of uh, during uh, its, uh, preservation in the herbarium specimen. To avoid that one and a regular consumption of uh, uh, naphthalene as well as the labor demand, we try to put the naphthalene inside dusting this one and covering it with the uh, polythene, which is creating an economic way and also every time when you are touching it, you are not touching the specimen. So, spoilage is less and also economizing the naphthalene and the third one is that even if it is earlier treated with mercury chloride, your hands are very safe. So, this is one way we have tried to develop, but uh, still observations are going on. For last 5 years, we have been switching over to this kind of practice. Now, she will show some of the uh, material, uh, the uh, terminology used here, like uh, this is the uh, genus folder, the green sheets. Everything when processed is put inside the folders and within the folders we are trying to show that the thin sheet is used. Now, we are replacing this thin sheet with the transparent sheet which she has already indicated. So, this uh, benefit we have already indicated and uh, outside the on the surface of this green uh, this thing we are with the pencil we are writing the botanical name and also its family. So, that my system of arrangement inside the herbarium can be done by uh, Ms. Rita Gupta. Uh, she can put it back after you come and consult the herbarium specimen, everything can be put back after use. Okay. These are basic principles of processing of the herbarium specimen, the way they are processed and done with the exercise and this demonstration is to give you a glimpses of how you can prepare. I think Rita you can take a, uh, you can sit down and any of the special query they can later on ask me. But at the same time, I would like to say that you can also prepare your own herbaria, herbarium specimens because earlier uh, during the world war, uh, when ships used to visit uh, the team of doctors and surgeons, they used to take the ships to different continents, continents. They used to, uh, they were very much interested in knowing the plants of that area. They started pressing up of the plants and those are the people who have developed the process of they have they become very much fascinated by this art and they press the material and later on they identified that material collected from different continents and those materials are still available in different global herbaria including Q which is having the largest herbarium collection of the global collection and India is represented in a big way. Our, sign, our uh, uh, students who have recently visited can, you, can, you can share with you. Uh, their experience, how they saw there, the whole floor of the herbarium is 
fixed with those kind of uh, herbarium and Indian section is completely depicted in a big way and you have large number of specimens represented. So the second uh, my request is you can collect large number because you know when we are talking that uh, what is big about a herbarium I have already indicated that recently I have read uh, uh, some somebody posted me a PDF con saying that climate change and the data gathered from herbarium. Is it not a very significant achievement of herbarium? Yes, definitely it is. Because if you want to see 50 years or 100 years back, what was what were the plants growing in that area? Are they still available here? Or their flowering time has changed? Only the herbaria can depict and we could uh, trace such kind of studies because I have told you that my explorers are going to different areas and they are going to botanical survey of India herbarium and many of the apple species have now shifted their areas from very higher hills to the bottom I mean they are going down similarly citrus cultivation is from the bottom level it's going ahead more more towards the higher hills because of the climate change similarly date of collection and also besides date of collection I have told you the ethnobotanical notes ethnobotanical notes simply because any of the plant herbarium specimen I may say I may be knowing about say in comparison to you I may be knowing 100 plants of the PGR significance in which I may give a list of underutilized plants say about 20 to 30. Some of you may know plants of one region some of you may know plants of the other region. But what is the big way what is one common platform where, where a whole team of the students can see the plants of the other region this is only the hub area that is how you can in your manual I have given a specialized topic I have given a topic that the hidden gardens of genetic resources what does this term means why I have said the gardens gardens term I have tried to because these are the material which need to be nurtured in the garden you may have live plants after looking at these plants you will say okay what is great about these plants they are nothing they are dead plants and why we should be bothering for them but I have told you that when we put them in the sheets and try to conserve it for the use of other people so that they can utilize the data they can study the material they can identify large number of specimens for their research purposes then in that case they need to come down to uh, herbaria of similar uses so hidden gardens gardens are because we are nurturing them to make them safe and in a usable form otherwise if you put any herbarium specimen or any dried plant product within one year the thing is gone we have to nurture them by changing sheets by putting them and if at all something happens we put them the deep freezer treatment also deep freezer treatment where we are putting two to three days yani, uh, 24 to 72 hours exposure in a deep freezer having minus 20 degree temperature treatment also uh, many of the herb area which we are having very important material or maybe you can also deposit uh, specimens to us if you are really interested in knowing the plant you can collect and send it to us there are certain methods using which you can send the material to us after processing the way she has indicated it is well depicted so uh, in such cases you can dry the material process them you need not bother about what kind of fungicide you will be putting if at all you can put the naphthalene powder or naphthalene balls inside otherwise completely dried pressed in a newspaper sheet you can parcel it to us our address is also already available and you can put a curator national herbarium of cultivated plants we will be doing a kind of service to you anything important and unknown to you you can always send it to us this is one request and I, at every fora I am requesting my younger generation to come forward to understand the importance of such resources which are not only helpful in the way I have told you but in many cases we have seen that such global resources are very very becoming important. Uh, I can quote only one or two examples. One of the B Pharma student of Rudiki University in, from the chemistry department he was working on the bark sample and extracting some phenols and all that and he came to us he says the sample available in the Kharibawli area from where he purchased his previous sample 
and the material now available he has exhausted with the previous sample now he wants to purchase another bulk and the material now is being given to him is not matching with the previous herbarium specimen so what is that and he was in a midway of his phd program he was just in a very bad shape and he wanted our help so we told them that we don't know what he was using earlier and we don't know what he is talking about and he doesn't know what is the bark sample of so i'm requesting you all that whatever your research material is later on you will be joining research programs or even your phd program or you will be entering into i consider all my students as the scientists and in the uh, program of pgr value so i am requesting that you collect your material your vouchers vouchers are nothing but representative of what you are working on any plant material crossability program what crosses you are making parents you have to put your thing into the in the dried uh, dried way so this is my humble request that and you should start i am not asking you to become a core taxonomist nobody can at these days and large number of information is a uh, lot of information is available on the web but at the same time if you are interested in knowing the correct identity and the value of the plant material you will gradually pick up this subject and nothing can be uh, uh, less interesting as the taxonomy per se and i don't call it as a taxonomy because it's a pgr science which will help you in uh, taking you to a correct path and the correct path is knowing about the importance of any plant material and utilizing in your own program the second uh, example i would like to say one of the girl of uh, similarly the pharma m pharma student from hisar she, uh, her thesis was to be submitted one day later and she wanted to know about uh, she wanted to have the authentication certificate we are also issuing the authentication certificate for the phd because in some of the universities they have made it compulsory to put at the first uh, first page that uh, what is the plant material on which you are working on so we are also issuing this certificate and that's she says that uh, this plant material and she is working on and she was giving me a local name and the local name she rightly converted that local name into a scientific name when i tried to say that it is not the same plant as this one because in the hindi kateri name is used for a species wild species of solanum as well as kateri is also used for the zizifa species and I sh she told me that she is working on one of them both are not related either she was uh, suggested to change her phd thesis or change her uh, material and work again on the same plant you can understand the value of under so i will request you that the moment you start your phd program let us be sure what you are working on okay with these uh, words i will now request you if you have any small questions or a big question if the time permits i don't know uh, how much time i'll be given but you can have uh, your questions any queries on any specific uh, relating questions which will satisfy you and i'll be able to give the appropriate answers thank you what about wild yams like wild tubers yeah how to preserve a tubers or wild yams okay uh you have collected a wild yam or you are growing or working on a wild yam you want to preserve it there are two methods uh because of the shortage of time i have not explained the bulky herbarium it's one term is called the bulky herbarium where you cannot there are certain cases where you cannot preserve them per se in a dried form you try you have to use the wet method wet met, method is where you can use certain jars putting some glass jars and there formalin and the uh, rectified spirit in different combination you have to use it 4 to 10% we are using but you have to uh, standardize the protocol this is one method second one uh, since uh, processing and uh, maintaining so many jars in my herbarium it is creating a lot of difficulty not only because taking out if you want to study or if somebody wants to study that uh, material taking out from that rectified spirit and putting that this formaldehyde it creates a lot of difficulty so what i have i am trying to do in the cultivated plants uh, herbarium is uh, taking pictures and in the yams let me explain you the shape of the eye the way it emerges and the color of the eye and the shape of the propagule and the shape of the fingers and the mother yam 
they are very very important for identification our Trishur station has already published a descriptor and uh, there are some publications on our website you can refer to them and there are certain it's a good question because uh, difficult to process material is the one on which we are supposed to work otherwise it's the work of botanical survey of India normally but we are facing a lot of difficulty like how to depict the vegetatively propagated material. Uh, recently we have got a large collection of uh, the aloe species. Aloe vera is one, but 20 species of aloe, we got it from the NBRI Lucknow. They wanted to have the IC number for that material. They donated uh, live samples which we are maintaining in our small net house and now how will I be depicting them is a big challenge for me and I am I'm going to think a similar method which I have indicated that I will be depicting a colored photograph pasted on the herbarium sheet in an illustrated folder also we can put a separate sheet and depicting the leaf dried in a certain way. We are also using the microwave for drying of such material. When they are succulents we give a slit and try to dry it. Okay. So, this is a very good question because it is difficult to process succulent water plants, aquatic plants, they are real challenge for us and drying them in a correct way to pro produce a quality specimen is rather difficult. Thank you so much. Any other question? Any query? How many of you have uh, prepared during your school days? the herbarium specimens, all of you, because in the 12th it is compulsory. So that exercise was done by you because you were supposed to submit maybe 25 specimen or 10 specimen, whatever. So at that time it was just a compulsion. But now you are agricultural background student and maybe in the thesis, uh, you will be writing some thesis and all that. So have you thought that uh, there is a need that you, you need to uh, preserve your samples, maybe seed samples or something uh, of similar type. I have given you two examples only. I have couple of examples to illustrate and this is not to frighten that you will end up into such problems, but it may happen. So, so everybody knows about what is a herbarium, but have you ever visited any national or international herbarium, at least national herbarium of your area? No. Any college herbarium you used to have? Because in the southern India, particularly in Karnataka and Kerala, those agricultural universities, they are maintaining very nice herbarium and the students coming from southern area, they are having very good knowledge on the, uh, this subject. Making the herbarium is one aspect, but besides they know little bit about uh, the knowledge on the subject. So I think uh, my request is justified because I consider that if uh, you do not realize the value of it thus now, then you will, you, you will face similar problems like I have already indicated. And I have requested Professor Madam that large number of theses which are being submitted by the PGR student, they should always accompany that thesis with a certificate certified saying that this uh, work is on the species such and such and it will be validated by National Herbarium and one of the vouchers will be deposited in my herbarium. This I am going to make it compulsory for all our student at least. Any other question? Any other relevant or in irrelevant subject? Anything which is coming into your mind you can ask. Anything relating to botany also you can ask. And agriculture also because uh, my basic Botany background has because of the interest in agriculture because now I am placed in agriculture, my agricultural interest has come up on the surface. So I can request, I can uh, understand and learn from you also many things. Sir, how much time this uh, authentication certificate takes to, uh, how, many, how much time will you get uh, to apply for a certain germplasm or say certain you are talking about germplasm or you are talking about authentication certificate for your herbarium specimen. They are two uh, different things. For a, for a herbarium certificate. Herbarium certificate, okay. Uh, the way when you deposited, deposit an ideal herbarium specimen. Ideal, what is ideal? I have already explained it to you, okay. 
and the moment the ideal herbarium specimen is given a green signal. Let me announce in front of you that uh, we are going to charge 500 rupees for issue of till so far it was free of cost. But uh, because of the recommendation of certain committee now we are going to charge 500 rupees. So, on the web we will be loading all those uh, you know uh, the guidelines for submitting the herbarium specimen. So, you can deposit and the time is 15 days at least if it is uh, because you know sometimes the material does not have enough characters. So, enough characters means it should be properly made and do not deposit any specimen saying only a leaf or a crushed powder or only a bark sample or only some a few seeds I will not accept it and only money will be deposited once I say that ok we will be able to issue the certificate then only you have to deposit the fee. So, you can mail me any time my mail this email id is there in this booklet and you can mail me and you can even you can send me the photograph first so that we are very well but if you give me that tomorrow your thesis is going to be submitted you issue me today and by mail only we just give you the certificate need not come here only the parcel you can send. But do not say that tomorrow your thesis is going to be submit you want it today only. No, 15 days time. So, other people do not want to submit me the herbarium specimen. <laughs> so, I think if you do not have any queries, I uh, will be stopping my this thing and after this you will be visiting our state of the facility, uh, state of the art facility of National Herbarium of Cultivated Plants. So, I think you can join us there. Thank you so much for patient hearing and thanks uh, Ms. Rita Gupta for helping me because she is the lifeline of uh, National Herbarium of Cultivated. She is the one who has founded this herbarium and she will be keep nurturing this garden. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Rita Tumbiao. <laughs> she is also a signatory to this achievement. And this, was, this year we released this uh, web for the public use. Thank you so much.